breathe. The flow of all life runs through you. Connected with a single breath, we are all inextricably linked to the forests of our planet. A world more ancient than the Amazon rainforest, the jungles of Indonesia are a force of nature that demands respect. But our home is under threat. In a race to stay connected, we have never been so out of touch. As our forests are dying, her breath becomes shallow. One of the reasons, deforestation. Where there was once ancient rainforests, now only palm oil trees spread across the land, strangling the horizon like a poison. This is our chance to be the protectors of the forest, to reconnect to our collective home. We are here in Kitambe, a town that borders the Lausa ecosystem in northern Sumatra. I'm Roxy Rogan, a conservationist from Australia. I've come to Indonesia to learn about the impacts of deforestation, the illegal wildlife trade, and our insatiable desire for palm oil. I'm here to understand the importance of connecting to our environment. This is our journey. The locals have a deep connection and appreciation of the land. They know how to use the resources from the jungle for everyday needs, cooking, cleaning and medicine. Being in the jungle is a way of life for them. Remedies and recipes handed down from generation to generation. My name is Sam Sudin, so I born here I grew up here, so it's jungle like my hometown, like my place, yeah. Mm. Because jungle is my life. Yeah. Lack of education and scarce employment opportunities leads many locals being forced to work in industries that are destroying their jungle, their home. Deforestation impacts entire ecosystems and places real danger on the animals and people that live within and around the jungle. An iconic species that is being severely affected by deforestation is the Sumatran elephant. Dr. Mobrocker, head of International Elephant Project, explains how disconnect from nature can become a serious threat to our jungle. The 
vast majority of people, and these are the people who are causing uh, problems for conservation, are uh, migrants from other areas. So it's people maybe from Java Island or from the southern part or northern part of Sumatra, which arrive, and um, most of them are not connected to the forest at all. And obviously they're not from that area, so they, they, they just see forest as a resource to, to be converted into agriculture land, cheap land. That's how they, they see nature. So it's something you can explore, something you can exploit, and then later yeah, uh, convert it into something which they know from the places where they come from, a uh, human-dominated landscape. Jack, head of the Sumatran Ranger Project, gives us an insight into the issues that the locals face where they're constantly diminishing forest and the relationship they have with the land. So tell me, is this palm oil here and then that goes into the forest? Yeah, and now it's too big area of the palm oil plantations. So in this area still have a wild elephant conflict. Yeah, and then the routinity is about three months. They come here and stay around one month and then back to the forest. So what happens with, what do the elephants do to the local places? How, how is there a conflict? So like a plants, the elephant is make a broken all the plants, but not just plant, also them house. Oh, so they yeah. break the houses and their farmlands and stuff. Yes. So then you get conflict with mm -hmm. the locals and the elephants. Yeah, so that's why the, right. the local people here is just move to another place. Right. Because they also scare with the elephant. When we take away the forest, it impacts not only the animals that live within the jungle, but the lives of the villagers. Human-wildlife conflict is becoming a more and more pressing issue as we encroach further into the jungle. We want to protect forests. We don't want a more company grabbing the land from the forest. Mm. So that's why we we do patrol along the buffer zones and also we want to helping the villagers when they are stay close with the national park and the goal is big hope the villagers be a keeper of the forest in them place mm. These are the Sumatran rangers. A critical part of their job is to search for and disarm traps and snares within the forest. It is a gruelling part of their job and at times have disarmed over 180 traps in a single patrol. So we found another trap here in the forest and then these are for the animal, so like a pig or deer but sometimes it's bear and tiger is caught in the this trap. And then how this trap is work is when uh, the animal put the legs inside the hole and then be like this. And then the leg is like this. When the forest has been cleared and destroyed, animals are more vulnerable to be taken out of their habitat. Traps like these can be placed in order to capture animals and sell them in the illegal wildlife markets. In Medan, these markets are on the streets and can often include protected species like the orangutan.
I speak with Ganong, an activist in Sumatra who has witnessed firsthand the impacts of the illegal wildlife trade on the orangutan species. Orangutans share 97% of our DNA and are one of our closest living relatives. Orangutan mothers always defend their babies very hard. They prefer to die instead of, you know, leaving their their infants or their babies wow. uh, taken by human. Yep. So in most cases, the mothers, the orangutan mothers, in most cases, mm. the orangutan mothers are killed to get their uh, her baby. Wow, that's uh, horrific. Uh, so uh, the orangutan mother is normally killed to get her baby. Uh, otherwise, she will protect it and protect her baby. And most orangutans on trade are babies. These animals are becoming refugees in their own home. For over 20 years, it's been Dr. Prache's life mission to help conserve and secure the orangutan species and their habitat. Working with renowned conservation organisation, the Orangutan Project, one of their most successful missions is the Jungle School for Orphaned and Rescued Orangutans. All the orangutans we get into our program are orphaned, so they don't have the necessary skill set compared to wild orangutans. So they have to learn, literally have to learn to live in the wild again. We have a small phase in the cage where we make behavioural enrichment to just stimulate them and let them learn and also let them adapt to the new area. Many of them are kept into a house or into a very bad cage in the backyard so they may feel strange in a forest. We get them as young as four years. White orangutans split from the mother at the age of eight or nine years. So we have to make up for the time they couldn't learn with their mothers. So we get them back into the school. We get them close to fruit trees that they learn. Yeah, literally, they have to learn the fruits are on trees. Because they haven't seen that before. Most of them are caught as babies. White orangutans still live on their mother's milk until the age of two. So they really have to learn from scratch how to, to live and to survive in the forest. So they learn how to um, avoid predators in the jungle, how to climb trees, and it takes them a few years to do this. Um, they're still very small, but the aim is that by the end of this jungle school, they will um, be able to be released back into the wild. So it's a really great program. Okay, okay. let's go. Oh. Oh. Happy. <laughs> 
<laughs> While the school for orangutans offers a haven for those rescued, there are ways in which we can help conserve the wild places and lessen the destruction in its tracks. At first glance, deforestation may seem like an isolated issue. But take a closer look and you'll see how these problems interlink with our own lives. Educating and empowering the public about their consumer choices is an essential part in helping solve this destruction of rainforest. We speak with Maria from palm oil free certification company, Orangutan Alliance, about how this is an issue that concerns all of humanity, not just those in Indonesia. Our unsustainable demand is really causing an issue for the planet, for endangered species, and also for people. What we do to the forest, what we do to the planet, we actually do to ourselves. We're all interlinked. If we don't change the way that we consume our demand for biofuel, the way that we choose what we buy, it's really going to have an impact on our own species' survival. Within my lifetime, almost a quarter of Indonesian rainforest has been destroyed. This disconnect from our only home is driving our own species into peril. We may not be able to reverse the past, but we can choose how we move forward, what kind of world we want to live in, what world we want to leave behind. is our future, our home. We have the ability to be protectors of the natural world. When she breathes, we breathe. We have the capacity to make great change for ourselves and for our planet. But we cannot ride on the shoulders of hope but take our futures by the reins and drive forward. We are the future. We are the keepers of the forest. <laughs> <laughs>